Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Hope it's a bright and sunny day wherever you are. It's lovely here. I'm having my morning cup of tea. I'm drinking my Puka Love Tea. Puka Love Tea. And it's um, rose, lavender and chamomile. So I've got it in my beautiful violet spring cup. So I hope that you're doing great and that you've got uh, whatever something to drink that makes you feel relaxed and um, just happy to be here. And so thank you for your support. Now, I want to remind you, by the way, that we've got an amazing website now. We've got articles uh, being published every day, 60andme.com. Please go out there and check out what's what's new. And we'd love your feedback. You know, always please comment on the, quest, on the um, articles and tell us what you think and uh, just engage. It's your place. It's your site. So um, we welcome you there. Now, I've got a great topic to talk about today, but I wanted to first remind you that our sponsor for today's show is International Living. Now, they are a great company who have people on the ground, boots on the ground to assess different retirement locations you know, places that you might be thinking about retiring. Uh, if you want to try something a little different, maybe live a different culture and uh, save a bit of money, um, they, they sort through all the questions and answer them for you. So if you go up to internationalliving.com forward slash 60 and me, you can just uh, put your name down and they'll send you a link to their global retirement index. So do us a favor and go out there and uh, check it out. It's definitely worth looking at. Now, my topic today is about um, something that we, we always say is so important, but um, I, I can't say it enough, and that is social engagement, social engagement. <laughs> You know, actually being uh, involved with other people in your 60s, how that really does help you to live longer, have a healthier life, reduce stress. It's it's one of those things that everyone agrees is good for you. Now, um, one of our bloggers, um, her name is Fran Meininger. She wrote an article on a topic that I hadn't thought about this in ages, but it's potlucks for boomers how to have a potluck dinner that uh, you can invite friends to. And it's a, just a beautiful way to get people together without the pressure of, you know, having a dinner party, of having to make the food all yourself and go through all that stress. It's about how to just do these kinds of potlucks where people bring themselves and maybe a dish or two. And the, the ideas she gives are honestly so fun that I was like writing notes myself as I was uh, reading them. So it's fun and friendly, and I think it's an, a wonderful article, so check it out. So what's it about? Well, as she says, and it's so true, the most important ingredient in a potluck is the people. It's the people that you invite. And she advises to keep the guest list fluid. Don't invite the same 10 people every time. Just mix it up and get them to bring friends. But it's really part of the joy of a potluck to make it um, you know, unexpected and new conversations and new dialogues, new people. So be a gracious host when people arrive, of course, and make sure everyone knows at least one or two people. You know, just be a good host. I mean, don't just invite them over and then let them fend for themselves. You still keep the little bit under control there so that people are feeling welcome and having fun. Now, but what can you do? Well, you can you be creative to, you know, in setting the stage so that people can, um, it, it kind of gives it a, a texture to the event, not just show up and have, you know, sit down on the sofa and eat. It's created a theme, you know, create a theme for the party. Um, you know, I don't know, call it the whatever, the hat potluck and everybody wears a funky hat or, you know, when you send it your invitation, have a quote or picture of what they can maybe expect to, to have happen at this, at this potluck. You know, have a country theme. It's really funny, when I was reading this uh, uh, friend's article, I remembered that in college, I used to do um, a potluck. It was based on ethnicity. So I would say, we'll have an Indian potluck next Friday and bring an Indian dish and then be prepared to tell us about it, you know, how you made it, what the ingredients were. And a little bit about the culture, if you know anything. And at that time, I didn't know anything about anything. And so having a, a Morocco uh, potluck, potluck was wonderful because I'd learn about Morocco, wherever that was, and also uh, eat the food. And I just had it in my dorm room and not even my dorm. I think we just used to use a, like a kitchen that was in the dorm area. But anyway, we, uh, we had fun. So what can you do? What kinds of parties can you have? An ethnic one is a good idea. That's one suggestion. Another is to do a cocktail uh, party, potluck. 
And this is where every you you maybe provide the uh, free martinis or the the drink, and everybody brings a canopy. What's a canopy? Well, a canopy can be, uh, you know, mostly it's like bread or puff pastry with something on top, uh, cheese or some, you know, some spread that you can pick it up with your fingers and eat it without a plate or a little plate, but just not too much fuss. Canopies are great fun, actually, and encourage people to dress up. You know, like I said, wear a hat or wear a, one of those fancy shawls or a, a brooch, some interesting piece of jewelry. Wear a funny necklace, funky necklace, something that is a conversation piece. And men and women, of course, I mean, mix it up or have all just girls, whichever you prefer. Um, another thing is a baked potato bar. I love baked potatoes. I haven't had a baked potato in ages, but they're fun. And you can just have baked potatoes, which are pretty inexpensive. And then just people can bring a filling to go in the baked potato. And this is great for the summer. If you have a little balcony, you can just take people outside and everybody can just sit down and relax and have a baked potato when, in small indulgence. They're great fun. So that's another one. Another one that she suggests, which I think is fun too, is the deserted island provisions. Desert I wrote deserted, but I think it's desert. Desert Island. Remember that show, if you're from the UK, Desert Island Discs, where they would interview um, celebrities on what were the, the, the music, the three or ten songs that they would take with them on their, des if they were stranded on a desert island. And uh, this potluck idea is similar as you basically bring something that you would, if you could ha have nothing else to eat for three days, like the only thing you could eat was this thing, what would you bring? Well, it would be a toss up for me between salted caramel ice cream and cheesecake. But this then would turn into a complete desert, a dessert, not desert, but dessert party. And maybe that's what it will end up being. But everybody brings something, maybe keep a few salads in the fridge just in case everybody brings dessert. But that's a fun one too. Another one is to bring a friend and a side dish. You know, so invite five people, tell them to bring a friend and a side dish, anything. You could do something basic and then have people bring salads or just something to nibble on. These, by the way, don't have to be like full course meals. They can be fun. Uh, you can always go home and eat a proper meal later. <laughs> They're for socializing, right? So it's, it's just all fun. And then the, fi the final one that, uh, that Fran mentions, which I think is lovely, and that's a pot of gratitude soup never thought of this but basically the the host you would would do a pot of stock you know just vegetable stock or whatever you like and then people would bring an ingredient to go in the soup so it could be potatoes or carrots or leeks or noodles or meatballs i guess or little bits of um something <laughs> the, the the possibilities are endless but people would just bring that piece of food and chop it up put it in the soup. And the idea, of course, would be for people to share, you know, what they're grateful for. I know it sounds a bit hokey, but I think it's great. We need more hokey, more schmaltzy, as far as I'm concerned. I think it's great. So this take and then take turns at saying why you're grateful and why you chose that particular food. I think it's a great idea. So what great ideas do you have for bringing people together? Maybe it's not a potluck. Maybe it's something else that you do. Leave your comments in the section below. Let's know what uh, what things you might bring to a potluck, what ideas you have for getting people and friends together. And maybe you've got a really successful potluck that you did that you'd like to share with us. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So leave your comments in the section below. Let's have a conversation about potlucks, socializing in your 60s, and um, just fun things you've done together with friends. I wish I could spend time with all of you. I really do. I mean, I know this is this is spending time, but it's not the same. Um, I'm really hoping that we can get some cruises together in the future to, you know, get people in the same space physically. But for now, do it with your friends, do it with people that you love and the new friends that you haven't met. But thanks for being here, everybody. Please uh, know that you're appreciated and I'm grateful for you and hope that uh, you enjoyed this little chat. Thanks, friend, for the article. And uh, we'll talk to you all again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.